Today, we're going to build another action game, which is great, right? Last week, we had a, a little bit of an Easter action game. Today, we're going to do a bit of a classical action game. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's played a game called Frogger. Who's uh, heard of the game called Frogger? Anyone want to tell us what Frogger is? Uh, if you've played a later, a newer version of it, you've probably heard of it called Crossy Road. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a game where you're a frog and you try to cross the road, but there are lots of cars and trucks moving around. So uh, it's a pretty scary game, but it's really fun. Okay, so we are building Crossy Road. So let's, uh, let's get rid of our cat because we don't need a cat. Crossing the road, cats don't cross the road, frogs do, right? And chickens, chickens and frogs cross the road. Okay, so let's go and build our backdrop. Let's go create a backdrop. Um, and uh, interestingly, we don't have many sort of street kind of crossings. Uh, what I like is Night City or uh, night, uh, that there's two night cities. Uh, what you can also choose is probably a school, make it a school crossing. Um, and we can also do urban. Urban is a good one. Colorful city. Oh, wow. Colorful city looks fantastic. You know what? I'm going to go with um, Ian's suggestion. I'm going to go with colorful city too. I don't think I've used this one very often. Um, it's going to be interesting because we're going to have the buses uh, or cars crossing. Uh, they're kind of going to be flying cars, okay? And we're going to be crossing the road from the bottom to the top of the city. All right. So let's uh, build our character. Let's choose our sprite. Uh, and we can build a uh, frogger or crossy road or whatever with a frog or a chicken. Uh, you can, uh, oh, look, there's frog here. You know what? I'm, I want to build Frogger with an actual frog, but you can build Frogger with your own character. It doesn't have to be a frog. Uh, and you can also build Chicken Crossing, but you don't have to use a chicken if you don't want to. Okay, you can use a bear, you can use a person, uh, any character you want. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to use a frog because uh, I want to make this uh, Frogger game sort of like a, a froggy game. All right, so uh, choose your frog. We're going to make it really small. I'm going to make it you know what, uh, I'm going to go 70, 70 smaller. Um, and uh, the tongue sticking out, I don't really like the tongue sticking out. So I'm going to edit it in the costumes. Uh, and, you know, every time we choose a new sprite, and if you want to change it, make it look different, uh, just like how we did the Easter egg last week, you can just go into costumes and then you can change it yourself. Okay, you don't have to use the exact same costume uh, that, that, scratch gives you okay you can always change it so uh i'm just going to remove the tongue on my frog okay so that's what i'm done trying to do i'm going to remove the tongue on my frog uh i'll go to costumes and then all i have to do is click on the tongue and then delete it just press this delete button see delete now i have a frog without the tongue sticking out so start with your frog or your character in the bottom and the middle of your screen, make sure it's not touching the edge of the screen. Because sometimes scratch can go a little bit funny when you're touching the edge of the screen like that, right? You want to make it so that your frog character is in like still completely in the screen, uh, but we're gonna put it in the middle on the bottom, okay? So events, when flag clicked. All right, when flag clicked, we're going to make it so that uh, when we click on the flag, we start the game right down the bottom. Okay, so we're going to create something called a my block. Okay, um, and the my block is used to create a, a custom function. Uh, remember, we did this uh, a few a few lessons ago, um, where we used a my block to create something uh, completely new. It's something that we always want to repeat, right? So you click on my blocks down the bottom here, this red block, and you click on make a block. I'm going to call this reset. Okay. Reset. R-E-S-E-T. This is going to be a reset function. Okay. What this does is every time this block gets run, it restarts the game. And then we press OK. Okay, so after you press OK, you should have a little um, uh, a little event here that says to define reset. Okay. 
So for define reset, this is what we want to do. Go to motion. And then we say, go to x, y. And then as long as your frog is already in the middle and the bottom, you don't need to change these numbers, okay? But if you want to make it exactly like mine, you can change your numbers to exactly the same as mine. You don't have to, uh, as long as your frog starts in the uh, bottom here, okay? So now this is the reset function, but what if we click on the flag? Nothing's gonna happen, right? We need to make it so that the frog actually runs the reset code as well. So this is just defining the reset function, but we need to actually go into my blocks and then drag the reset code so that uh, it actually calls the function. Okay, I know this is a little bit new to everybody, but you know, using my blocks and using functions is really important part of coding. Especially for some of the people here who are thinking about doing OUCC or the cat test, um, the, uh, the cat competition, um, no understanding functions uh, is going to be really, really important. Okay, so we go define reset. Uh, we go to uh, the bottom middle. And then when you click the flag, we reset. So that makes the frog go down to the bottom. All right. When we click the flag also, we want to reset our score to zero. We want to make it so that once we cross the road and go all the way um, uh, to the other side, we want to give you a point. And for every point that you get, the game also gets harder, okay? So uh, let's, let's go with uh, creating a variable. So make a variable, call it score, and make it for all sprites. So make a variable, call it score, for all sprites, and then click on OK. Because we want to make this game so that uh, every time you cross the road successfully, you get a point. And every time you, um, you cross the road and you get a point, the game gets harder and harder and harder. Okay. So score, press OK. And then after reset, we also set score to zero, not set my variable to zero, set score to zero. So uh, that's, that's kind of the same as lives, right? Okay, let's get an event. When uh, space is pressed. When space is pressed. Um, you know what? When up is pressed, I think, up arrow, sorry. When up arrow is pressed, what we want to do is we want to um, change y by 10. Change y by, you know what? If I make it 20, I think it's probably better. Let's have a look. You know what? 20, 20 is better. All right. Up arrow key press, change y by 20. When down arrow is pressed, so you get your, all your um, events from the events blocks, yeah? When down arrow is pressed, we change Y by minus 20, all right? Now you can test it, okay? Uh, after you got those two codes, when you press up and down, you can cross the road up and down. Now we're going to make the whole game uh, cover the whole screen. So it's not just the road here, but uh, when you want to modify it, if you want to change a game so that it's a little bit, oh, you know what? Let me think for a second. We can make it so that the game starts like this and then you cross this road. But, um, hmm, just a little bit um, concerned. Um, you know what, let's, let's just keep it like that. Let's just keep going up the screen. And then what we'll do is we'll have the cars moving across, but they're not necessarily on the road because if all the cars are on the road, then it's going to be a very tight game and you probably won't be able to play it very well. So we'll have the cars moving all across the screen. Okay, 
when uh, up arrow keys press, change Y by 20, when down arrow keys press, minus 20. And then you probably know what I'm gonna do next. When the left arrow is pressed, change X by minus 20. Yeah, you probably knew I was gonna do this already. And then when the right arrow is pressed, change X by 20. And then make sure you test it out. Make sure you test out your game so that we can make sure that we are definitely Definitely working. Okay. All right. Now we also need a special bit of code for the up arrow so that when we press up, when we are at the end, we want to get your extra point. We want to score you, okay? So let's go move our uh, left arrow code down for a second. If I, after I change my Y by 20, I'm going to check to see if I've reached the end. So I go control, if then block. Oh, I'm going to move this down as well. If our Y value is more than 160, then we have crossed the road. If you go into operators, something is bigger than something, all right? So you need that number is 160. What is bigger than 160? And then we're gonna score us. And then you put in, you scroll down to Y position. If the Y position, which is the vertical position, is bigger than 160, it means that we've pretty much reached the top of the screen and we've crossed the road. So if the Y position is greater than 160, then what do we do? We are crossing the road. So we go into um, to our variables and then we go change my score by one. And I also go into my blocks and then we say we reset the game, okay? All right, so now you test the code. Every time you reach the end, you reach the end, it's going to give you a score and it's going to reset your frog. Bing. All right, got one score, let's do it again. Bing, got two score, let's go again. Bing. All right, three score, so this is working. Now we gotta start adding some, um, some uh, obstacles, okay? But before we add some obstacles, I want you to move some of your code down like this because we're going to add something uh, into our uh, when flag clicked and uh, our define reset later on, okay? But before we do that, I'm gonna add a bus to this game. So let's go uh, choose a sprite. And then I'm going to uh, look for a car or a bus. Oh, do this. Do it for uh, forever loop. So this is for when the flag is clicked, okay? We do a forever loop to check if we get hit by a car. So in the forever loop, we go, if we are touching the car, then we also reset our change of score and reset, okay? So if we are touching the car, so sensing, and then we look for a touching mouse pointer, but instead of mouse pointer, we're gonna touch your car or your bus or whatever. And then you go into variable to set your score to zero and also reset. This means that uh, you've been hit by a car and we are uh, moving the frog back into the bottom of the screen. Uh, and um, re removing our score. So let's try that. So if you bump into your car, then it's going to reset my score and put me back on the bottom of the screen. Okay. 
Now, whatever your car is or your bus is, I want you to click on the, uh, the vehicle. And then I want you to give your vehicle some, uh, some code, okay? So when the flag is clicked, we want this vehicle to hide itself and then we're gonna clone it. All right, so when the flag is uh, clicked, we want to um, uh, hide our uh, car because we're going to clone it. When we're cloning things, we need to hide the original. So here we go, when flag clicked, we hide. And then control, we're going to go and create a bit of a, uh, a loop, okay? Uh, and create a forever loop. Oh, actually, not a forever loop. Let's do. Um, let's do. Uh, repeat. Hold on. Let me think for a second. Okay. Let's just let's just hide it. And let's just uh, repeat um, uh, three times. We're gonna have three cars first, okay? Or, or three um, uh, buses, whatever your, your um, creature um, baddie is. Okay, we're gonna make it move between negative 70 and negative 70 and 160. Okay. So now we go to create a clone of myself. And then we're going to create a, a code for when it starts as a clone. When I start as a clone, Go motion. And then we say we go to X, Y. For X, it's going to be negative 70 to, oh, whoops, sorry. For X, it's uh, negative. 100 to 100. Okay, so we need to have a pick random. Pick random, negative 100 to 100. And for Y, we need to have pick a random, negative 70 to 100. Okay. After it's uh, moved to a random spot, we're going to show the sprite. So go to looks and then you go show. And then after that, we have a forever loop because it's going to move back and forth across the screen. So forever loop. And then we go motion move 10 steps and then finally if our edge bounce so if you click on the flag we should have the cars starting to move across the screen like that. But something is not right. The cars are going upside down. So what we need to also do is set rotation style left, right. So when the flag is clicked, we hide and then set rotation style left, right so that the cars don't go upside down. 